So you've decided to go down the path of turbocharging your car. But how do you pick the right turbocharger? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about turbochargers. I'm going to talk about all the turbo specs and terminology and everything you need to know to pick the right one for your build. On the next episode, I'll be giving you a step-by-step -step on how to choose the right turbo for your car with all the calculations and stuff. Like this is going to be a super boring video. This is it. So I've already done a quick video on how to put together a turbo kit and everything you need to turbocharge a car. But it goes without saying that the most important piece of any turbo kit is obviously the turbocharger itself. Sadly, you can't just walk into a store and ask for a large turbocharger with extra sauce. It's more complicated than that. But don't worry, I got you. The first step in choosing the right turbocharger size is to establish a target horsepower. It's important to stay realistic here. Now for this video, you and I are gonna pick a turbocharger for the Project Miata. So that's gonna be our guinea pig. Now, am I gonna make 700 horsepower out of that 1.8 liter in the Miata? Absolutely not. I'm lucky if I manage to squeeze 250 out of that slow piece of shit. So we're just gonna go with a nice round number of 300 horsepower as our target crank horsepower. The second step is to think about how you're gonna use the car. Is it gonna be a track only build or is it gonna be a fun street car? In my case, the Project Miata is gonna be mostly a street car with occasional track use. Okay, with those out of the way, let's go over the anatomy of a turbocharger real quick. So you know what I'm talking about when I say things. It's about a turbocharger, you need to know the parts. A turbocharger has a turbine housing on the turbine side. Inside the turbine housing, you have the turbine wheel. Surprise, who would have thought? The exhaust gases enter the turbine housing through the turbine inlet, spin the turbine wheel, and they exit through the turbine outlet. This section of the turbine wheel where the exhaust gases enter the wheel is called the inducer. And the section the exhaust gases exit from is called the exducer part of the turbine wheel. On the opposite side of the thing is the compressor housing. Inside the compressor housing, you have the compressor wheel. Again, just, just full of surprises, you know? This compressor wheel is driven by the turbine wheel and it sucks in air through the compressor housing inlet and pushes it out through the compressor housing outlet. And just like the turbine wheel, the part where the air enters the compressor wheel is called the inducer and the part where the air exits the wheel is called the exducer. Now, why did I just go through all that? Because the size, the shape, and the general geometry of every single one of these components actually determine how the turbocharger behaves. For example, you might hear people talk about trim. Wheel trim describes the relationship between the size of the inducer and the exducer section of a wheel. The closer the diameter of the inducer to the diameter of the exducer, the higher the trim value. And generally speaking, a higher trim value would mean more airflow capacity for both the turbine and the compressor wheel. Another terminology you might see on a turbo spec sheet is the AR value. Not to be confused with the AFR or AF value, those stand for air fuel ratio. This one actually stands for area over radius. The area is the cross sectional area of the turbine inlet. On the compressor side, that would be the discharge. And the radius is actually the distance measured from the center of that area to the center of the wheel. But what does this even tell you? Well, it all depends whether we're talking about the compressor housing or the turbine housing. On the turbine side, it really affects performance. A smaller AR value would increase the speed of exhaust gases. This is good for low RPM engine power and fast spool ups exactly what you need to build a fun street car or autocross or something like that but this also reduces the flow capacity at higher engine speeds which would hurt your peak engine power a turbine housing with a larger ar value would solve that issue but it would also take longer for the turbocharger to spool up not an issue if it's a track car you'd be chilling near the red line anyway but if it's a street car you'll spend most of your time in turbo lag now the ar value for the compressor housing actually doesn't affect performance that much. It's, it's, uh, no. That's why usually for the compressor side, you want to look at a compressor map. One of these. Oof, look at that. You ready to understand how to read this? All right, let's ignore that weird shape in the middle for a second, and let's just talk about the axis. Because just like any graph ever, once you understand the axes, the rest of it just talks to you. So first, let's talk about the x-axis, mass flow rate. This is the amount of air that flows through your compressor and eventually your engine, usually expressed in pounds per minute. But how do you get that number? Well, remember when I said you need a realistic target horsepower? 
this is where you need it. You take that target horsepower and multiply it by the air fuel ratio. 12 is a very solid air fuel ratio with pump gas. So we're gonna go with that. And then you multiply it by something called the brake specific fuel consumption or BSFC for short. Don't stress over these names. It's just the amount of fuel your engine needs to burn per hour to generate one horsepower. Now you could measure this, but it's just not practical, especially just for calculating turbo size. So it's safe to just use an estimate here or be close enough. Typically the range is between 0.5 to 0.6 pounds per horsepower per hour for turbocharged engines. So we're going to assume we fall right in the middle at 0.55 pounds per horsepower per hour. You divide that number by 60 because you want to convert it to minutes because the axis is pounds per minute. You want the same thing. What am I, your math teacher? And that's how much airflow you would need to make that 300 horsepower, 33 pounds per minute. You notice how there was no mention of the displacement or the engine or any of that here? Yeah, because it doesn't really matter. For an engine to make 300 horsepower, it needs to flow 33 pounds of air per minute. Doesn't matter if it's a Miata E36 or the FRS or BRZ or any of that. To make 300 horsepower, it needs to flow that much air or very close to it. With this number alone, you can narrow it down to a handful of turbos. If the funky shape isn't on top of that number, that turbo isn't the one. If the number is to the left of that shape, that compressor is way too big. You need to go smaller. What do you think you're driving? And calm down. If the number ends up to the right of it, the compressor is way too small. You need to go bigger. What are you, soft? Good. Let's move on to the Y axis. The pressure ratio. The pressure ratio is the ratio between the pressure of air going into the compressor and the pressure of air coming out of the compressor. This is not really the same number as boost pressure. Close though, but we'll get to that. The ratio is calculated by dividing the absolute outlet air pressure, so the pressure coming out of your compressor, by the absolute inlet air pressure. So the pressure coming into your compressor from the air filter. Now the mass flow rate wasn't really engine specific, but this one is. Because yes, regardless of the engine, you need 33 pounds per minute of air to make 300 horsepower. But a smaller displacement engine needs to compress this air a lot more to make it fit inside its smaller cylinder. It's the same 33 pounds per minute, it's just more dense. That means the smaller the displacement of your engine, the higher the pressure ratio you would need to make that target horsepower. But how do you know how much pressure ratio your engine need. Bust out that calculator because this math thing is about to get serious. All right, let's calculate the pressure ratio we need for the Project Miata to make 300 horsepower. <laughs> As if. Well, there are a few things you need to know about your engine. Engine displacement in cubic inches. Displacement for the Miata is 1.8 liters. That's 110 cubic inches. Max RPM. Max RPM is around 6,900. Good. Now there are a few things you need to just estimate because it's either not practical to measure them or the estimates give you an accurate enough value. One of them is engine volumetric efficiency. For a modern four valve per cylinder design, it ranges from 95 to 99. For a two valve design, 88 to 95. The Miata does have four valves per cylinder, but I wouldn't exactly call it modern. So we're just gonna be at the bottom of that range, 95%. Next is intake manifold temperature. For an intercooled setup, it ranges from 100 Fahrenheit to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna go with the worst case scenario, 130 degrees Fahrenheit. There's also a constant called the gas constant, which is 639.6. Don't overthink this number. It's just a constant. It's just chilling in that formula basically to make things work. With our 33 pounds per minute of mass flow rate, just toss all these numbers into this formula and we get our absolute manifold pressure of 34.5 PSI. Now for the purpose of this video, we're gonna assume that I live at sea level. So my ambient air pressure is around 14.7 PSI. Yours is most likely going to be different. Just Google your location and just get that number. Now, if you subtract ambient air pressure from this, in my case, 14.7, you get your boost pressure. So the Miata is about to make 300 horsepower at 19.8 pounds of boost. Now to get the pressure ratio, we take our ambient air pressure, in my case, again, 14.7. Now there's some restriction with the air filter. You might be able to get that number through the manufacturer of the air filter, but one PSI is generally a good estimate. So we're probably close to 13.7 PSI right at the compressor inlet. Now we already calculated the manifold air pressure at 34.5 PSI. Once again, there are probably restrictions due to the intercooler or the plumbing. Like some cars that come turbocharged from factory, they lose four PSI or even more. But for a custom setup where you don't care about noise or emissions for that matter, two PSI is a good number. That means we must be at 36.5 PSI at the compressor outlet 
to have 34.5 PSI in the intake manifold. We take that, divide it by 13.7, 2.5. That's our pressure ratio. All right, at this point, you should know what the Y and X axes are and what your numbers are for your car. For the Miata, we have 33 pounds per minute for mass airflow and 2.5 for pressure ratio. Now, let's talk about the graph itself. The shape in the graph has islands. These are called efficiency islands. The one in the center is when the compressor is at its highest efficiency. As you move further out, the efficiency drops till you get to the choke line on the right and the surge line on the left. These lines are called the speed line. There's a high limit at the top and low limit at the bottom. Obviously, when you plot your numbers onto the compressor map, you wanna end up on the most efficient island. So let's take a look at it for you. First, we have the Garrett GT2860RS. According to Uncle Gary himself, this is good for 250 to 360 horsepower for 1.8 to 3 liter engines. Sounds perfect, doesn't it? Let's take a look at the compressor map. We're not even on any of the efficiency islands. Obviously, this turbocharger is not gonna work for us. Gary, why you lie to me like that? Let's look at a bigger turbo then. The GTX 2867R. Good for 275 to 550 horsepower for engines 1.4 to 2.5 liters. 33 pounds per minute and 2.5 pressure ratio. We are right in the highest efficiency island. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our turbocharger. So to sum everything up, we talked about some turbo anatomy and terminology. I showed you how to calculate the airflow you need to make your target horsepower. I also showed you how to calculate how much boost pressure you need to make your target horsepower with your engine. We also looked at a couple compressor maps, so you should have an understanding of what they mean. This will probably end up being my longest video, and I bet you are the only one who's watching at this point. You know what though? Good for you. Now you're fully equipped to make an informed and educated decision on your turbocharger size. Now tell me, what are you trying to turbocharge? I'm actually curious. Let me know down in the comments. So that's it for this long, boring video. Let me know if you have any questions or if I missed anything down below in the comments. If you've been a follower, you know that I answer most, if not all questions. Follow the build on Instagram and TikTok. Subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching.